The natural numbers are the numbers starting from zero and going up in increments of one. So the number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on infinitely. So what's the cardinality of this set of natural numbers? And you might say, okay, in the set of natural numbers, there's infinitely many elements. So we'll just call the cardinality of this set infinity. And that would be fine, except different infinite sets have different cardinalities. And giving them all the same symbol is not the best way of classifying them. So there's a special symbol used to denote the cardinality of the natural numbers. And that's this symbol right here. So this is the Hebrew letter Aleph. It's the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet and the little subscript zero. And this is called Aleph Naught. For now, we'll just talk about three different ways of classifying the cardinality of a set. So let's say that X is some set. We have three cases. First, if the cardinality of X is less than Aleph Naught, then we say that X is a finite set. Um, second, if the cardinality of X is the same as Aleph naught, then we say that X is a countably infinite set, a countably infinite set. Third, if the cardinality of X is greater than Aleph naught, then we say that X is an uncountably infinite set. So X is an uncountably infinite set. So let me give examples of sets in each of these cases. So first, what if X is a finite set? So let's say that X is the set one, two, eight. And we have the natural numbers again. That's zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. And we are trying to show that the cardinality of X is less than Aleph naught. And the way we can do that is to show that there's no surjection from X to the natural numbers. So let's draw a function from here to the natural numbers. I'll draw these arrows. And uh, no matter how I drew these arrows, uh, this would not be a surjective mapping, and that means that an arrow points to every element in the natural numbers. I only have three arrows, and with three arrows I can't point to infinitely many elements. So um, that's why there's no surjection from x to the natural numbers, and that's why the cardinality of x is less than aleph naught. Now let me show you an example where X is a countably infinite set. So let's say that X is the set 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Um, you might say that, okay, X is the natural numbers except with the first five elements removed. So the cardinality of X is going to be the natural the cardinality of the natural numbers minus five and so let's look at that here's the natural numbers uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 and so on and let me draw a mapping from x to the natural numbers so I'll map 5 to 0 6 to 1 7 to 2 8 to 3 9 to 4 10 to 5 and so on and this is just the mapping where f of n goes to n minus 5 and this is an injective mapping because every element in here points to a different place in here no two elements in here point to the same place and this is a surjective mapping because every element in the natural numbers in here has at least one arrow pointing to it. So this is an injective mapping and a surjective mapping, so it's a bijective mapping. And when you have a bijective mapping, it shows that the two sets have the same cardinality. So this actually means the cardinality of X equals Aleph naught. Uh, let me show you another example. Let's say, the car, the, let's say that X is the set of uh, non-negative even numbers. So 0, 2, 4, 6, 
8, and so on. And you might say, okay, x is the even natural number. So that's just half of them. So we'll say that x is aleph naught divided by 2, not minus 2, aleph naught divided by 2. And uh, let's look at that. So here's the natural numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And I'll draw a mapping from this set to this set. I'll map 0 to 0, 2 to 1, 4 to 2, 6 to 3, 8 to 4, and so on. And this is the mapping where f of n equals n divided by 2. And you'll notice that this is a surjective map because every element in here is pointed to by some arrow. And it's an injective map uh, because no two elements in here point to the same place. So this is a bijective map. And again, this shows that the cardinality of x and the cardinality of the natural numbers are the same thing. Now let me show you an example of an uncountably infinite set. So let's say that x is the set of infinite sequences of zeros and ones. So for example, we could have the sequence that's all zeros, say the sequence 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and it goes on forever. Or we could have the sequence that's all 1, where it's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and also goes on forever. Or we could have the sequence that's alternating zeros and one. We could have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Or we could have where it's alternating but starting with 1 instead. We could say it's the sequence 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Or we could just have it start with 1 and be 0 the rest of the way. Um, or we could have it start at 0 and be 1 the rest of the way. Or there's lots of different things you could do. Uh, the point is that all of these are infinite sequences of zeros and ones, and so all of them are in x, because x is the set of all of these, all of these things. And we want to show that the cardinality of x is greater than aleph naught. And we can do that by showing that there's no surjection from the natural numbers to x. So let's do a proof by contradiction. Let's say there's a function that maps from the natural numbers to x. So let's say, I don't know, f of 0 equals this, f of 1 equals this, f of 2 equals this, f of 3 equals that, f of 4 equals this, f of 5 equals this, and so on. This is just an example. Um, and we're assuming that f is surjective which means that every element in here will be mapped to by some natural number. Um, so uh, every element in x is going to be in here somewhere, um, and it's going to be mapped to by some natural number. Uh, let's consider a sequence given by taking the elements along the diagonal here. So we take the first element of f of 0, the second element of f of 1, and so on. Uh, so this sequence would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and who knows what comes afterwards. And then I'll create another sequence. I'll say s prime is the sequence by taking uh, the inverse of whatever is in here. So I change 0 to 1 and I change 1 to 0.
and this sequence right here has an interesting property so the first element one is different than the first element right here um, it's designed to be that way so we know that uh, s prime is different from f of zero at least there and the second element zero is different than the second element of f of one which is right here and so on s prime is different in at least one space uh, for every sequence that f maps to so we know that s prime is different than every single sequence that f maps to because that's how we how we construct it so that means for every natural number a f of a does not equal s prime because we designed s prime in such a way that it's different from every f of a um, on the other hand s prime is an infinite sequence of ones and zeros and x is the set of all sequences of ones and zeros so s prime is in x and we assumed that f was surjective which means that every element in x is matched to by some natural number by definition of surjective there exists some a such that f of a equals s prime and these two statements right here are a contradiction here we're saying that f of a does not equal s prime ever and here we're saying that f of a does equal s prime for some a and this contradiction uh, shows that our assumption that f is surjective has to be false so that means there is no surjective function from x to the natural numbers and so this shows what we were wanting to show that the cardinality of x is greater than the cardinality of the natural numbers and as we said before that means x is called an uncountably infinite set